Hello and good evening everyone. This is Fahim Ahmed and today we are going to learn about basic concepts of economics which include the fundamental problem of economics, factors of production, types of economic systems and the last one is positive and normative statements. So the first question is why does economics exist? And to answer this question we have to understand the fundamental problem of economics which is our wants are unlimited, but our resources are limited. We all have wants in our life, like food, cell phone, good education, big house, car, but you cannot get everything you want. Let's suppose you go to a store with $100 in your pocket. Although you want to buy number of item, but you cannot buy everything you want in $100. So then what do you do? You go with the choice. You have to choose out of those items as per your needs. And we call this concept scarcity. And the way human behave to deal with that scarcity or fundamental problem of is called economics. Now one thing you have to understand about scarcity, that scarcity is closely related to shortage. However, shortage is temporary, like at the time of Christmas, some of this term is, is short, but you will get it after, once the Christmas is over. But in the case of scarcity, it is internally generated or created, where you always want more than what a society can produce. Let's suppose you have a car, you have a one car, a small car, so you want a bigger car. If you have a bigger car, you want another car. You want car for yourself, you want car for your wife, then you want car for your kids. So, and the wants are going on, going on, going on. So, it's an internally created thing. So, don't confuse that scarcity concept with the concept of shortage. Now, the question comes that, okay, fine, we have unlimited wants, we have limited resources, and this concept we call is scarcity, and the way human behave. To maximize satisfaction, it's economics, like economic deals, how to maximize your satisfaction or how to behave in a certain manner when you have limited resources and unlimited bonds. So how can we, uh, okay fine, we know everything that, okay, economics do this, but how does economics do? So economics, every society, as per economics, has to answer or has to figure out three things. One is what to produce, another is how to produce, and third one is for whom to produce. Like when I talk about what to produce, so society has to answer that does the economy use its resources to build more hospitals, roads, schools, or go with the option of luxury hotels. Similarly, they want iPhones or iPad or double espressos. Now, if we talk about how to produce, so what's the best use of our scarce resource? Should we subsidize the purchase of solar panels for roofs? That this has to answer. Third thing, for whom to produce? Like, who will get expensive hospital treatment and who not? Should there be a minimum wage? Or perhaps a living wage? What are the consequences and causes of poverty in societies across the globe? So these are three basic concepts or three basic things which every society has to answer. How society answer these questions? Society answer these questions through economic systems. But before we move to economic systems, I want to give another concept which is related to resources. What is this concept about? When we talk about limited resources, so in economics, resources, when we talk about resources, so we call it factors of production. Here you go. So resources in economics, we call it factors of production. Now there are four factors of production, land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship. When we talk about land, so journal is speaking, we talk about physical space, piece of land. 
But when it comes to economics, it's not only about physical space, but it also includes natural resources, like whatever is within the land, under the land, or on the surface of the land. Everything, we call it land. Second thing, labor. It's very simple. We talk about skilled workers. It can be skilled, it can be unskilled workers. Third thing is capital. Now, capital is something that is used to produce other goods and services in the future. It may include machinery, equipment, new technology, factories, other equipment, other buildings, and money. Now, the important concept, fourth one is entrepreneurship. Or you can say entrepreneur. Who is entrepreneur? Entrepreneur is an individual who manages all the factors like land, capital, labor. And the motive of entrepreneur is to earn profit. Because entrepreneur runs a business, it manages, he manage, he or she manage, manages all the factors of production, and in the reward, he gets profit. So that was the small concept of factors of production. Now come back to our uh, question what to produce how to produce and for whom to produce how society answers society answers through economic systems there are three kinds of economic systems one is market economy another is command economy and third is mixed economy first we talk about command economy we also call it planned economy in the command economy or planned economy government control all the resources or factors of production the goal is to provide free and easy access to things like education and healthcare to everyone in the society. In simple words, government decides what to produce, how to produce, and for whom to produce. Another one is market economy. On the other side of the spectrum, we have free market economies. In free market economies, individual controls the resources or factors of production. And government doesn't interfere in any matters. Let's suppose business make things like car, not for mankind, because but because they want to make a profit. So the goal of free market economy and individual is to generate a profit. And since consumer, that's me and you, get to choose which car we want. So the idea of market economy is that individual fulfills society needs when they seek their own self-interest. Now it looks like that free market is perfect and we do not need any interference from government. But that's not right. There are certain things which government must do because individuals cannot do. Like rule of law. Who is going to maintain the rule of law? Government is going to maintain the rule of law. Second thing, infrastructure, roads, railways. Third thing, regulation. When we talk about individuals, they are concerned about their profits. So if they are producing a car, they will not realize about the, they will not consider the factor of air pollution. So government has to regulate the market so that air pollution or minimum wages paid to workers, these kind of rules government will, will set. And that gives the concept of mixed economy where consumer preferences is partly determined by market and some of the factors are controlled by government. And in general, if you talk about current world, everything is, uh, most of the economies are mixed economy. You hardly find any command economy or market economy. Like let's take an example of Canada. They have healthcare system which is managed by or maintained by government. But other factors, other things are determined by mark consumer uh, consumer preferences, and individual and market has to make the decisions. So these are three systems. Every system has its own positives and negatives. But generally, you will not find any economy where completely it's a command economy or market economy. Either you talk about China, you talk about North Korea. The best example of command economy is North Korea, or in market economy, you talk about USA, uh, Br Great Britain, United Kingdom. So these all are, in some manner, it's a mixed economy. So well, now we have finished our 
third concept which is types of economic systems now our fourth concept is positive and normative statements now the way you phrase your statement is a big deal in economics our statement is always positive why our statement is always positive because positive statement means that you are talking about something based on facts and data yes your statement can be correct your statement can be incorrect because we can it allows us to test the statement with facts and data on the other side when we talk about normative statement so it's based on values opinion judgments like you cannot make decision whether it's true or false let's take an example positive is a statement is is was will be whereas normative is ought to or should what do you mean what does that mean like when prices fall people often delay their purchases now most of the you guys will be thinking that it's incorrect yes it can be correct it can be incorrect but it will definite this statement will definitely be based on some facts and figures so you can go and check whether the person who is saying this is or giving this statement whether that person is correct or incorrect on the other side when we talk about normative where we say ought to should like as i said it's opinion or judgment orange is better than green you cannot go you don't have any facts and figures to go and check whether orange is better or green is better it it's a uh, point of view or different people have different way of thinking similarly let's take an example of walmart someone comes and tell you people tend to shop at walmart store more than when they get a pay raise like when they get a pay raise the people are tend to shop more from walmart you can go and check whether that's the right uh, statement or wrong statement but if someone comes and tell you everyone should shop at walmart store you don't know why that person is saying because it's not a fact it's that person's opinion so it's very simple and positive we say is was will be where is normative it's ought to should so that's the end of our today's first lecture thank you very much for watching i'll see you in next video and don't forget to subscribe our channel goodbye